Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We've gone with something a bit different today. So I've sent over some footage to my good, trusted coach and friend, Cameron Pallet. He works over at Hinkley Gymnastics in Leicester. He's very experienced and he's the guy that I go to for technical advice with gymnastics. What I've done is I've sent him over five minutes of our footage from par eight. Cam's going to break it down for us. He's going to tell us what he thinks on how Hannah should be getting better at her skill. Hopefully you guys can learn something from this as well as me and Hannah. We just thought this would be a great opportunity while her back handspring's not perfect is to, to break it down with an expert like Cameron so you guys can see. So Cameron doesn't like talking very much to introduce himself. <laughs> but when he, when he gets into the flow of his coaching, he has that snap like my get on the red line, guys. And everyone snap, snap into action. So, are you ready, Cameron? I am, yeah. We're going we're gonna right. to play the first one, and then we're going to follow through. We've got a five-minute video. We'll pause in between each somersault. Cameron will give his feedback, and then we'll, we'll go with the flow from there. Okay? So, let's start with the first one, then. Here we go. It's not bad, you know. It's got quite a lot of power. But, all right, let's have a look at the round off. Here we go. Beautiful pointed toes. So this, this one of the main things that people do is pipe the hips down a lot from here. So you've kept them quite open to start off with, uh, which is good. Um, but then we get this. <laughs> Angles leak power, that's what it is. So if I... I'll carry on a little bit. What did you just say then? Um, angles leak power? Angles leak power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Explain the more that. angles you've got, the more power we're leaking, basically. I, I'll show you when I go on the drawings. They're not yeah. very good, but um, <laughs> it's a bit of a better explanation. Exactly. And then, again, on the landing position, we've got a couple of angles. Yeah. So, if I go over to my lovely drawings. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. <laughs> so. Him all night, that has. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, how do I get my... There you are. Arrows. So what we've got when we pipe down from the round off, it makes us bend our legs. Powers, if you can, you can imagine them in arrows to make it a lot more simpler so you understand it. So when we're hitting the floor here from our round off, we've got power going like this way, like this, because that's where all your weight's going, it's going down, yeah? Yeah. When we've got quite a bit of a hip angle and knee angle like this, the power is going this way. So when we're talking about like a rebound, obviously because you've got like an air track and a sprung floor, when the power goes down, it has to come back again. When you've got bent knees like this, the power is leaking this way and it's not really got anything to rebound with. Whereas when you go over with straight legs and like open hips, when the power is going down through your feet and you're pressing down through your toes, it will shoot back up again, giving that like diagonal backwards motion almost like this yeah 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 also Snapping. when you're bending your knees like this you sort of have to let me get rid of those you like stop because you're like mm. yeah because all your power is going where there's nothing to rebound with almost um it's, i think it's really good to look at a, a diagram like this and look at like the physio the is it autonomy or physiology of, of a somersault? Because there's no point. Biomechanics. Bi yeah, biomechanics and moment of inertia. I know that one. <laughs> so, so, because we've got a hip angle. Yeah. So okay, I'm down like that, coming to you, that you, you, you've obviously studied gymnastics more than me and you're, you're going into development and you're going to have an Olympian eventually. If it, anyone That's a dream, is, isn't it? Was <laughs> Cameron now? In ten years, he's going to be at the Olympics with one of his gymnasts. He's that good of a coach. But I, I think hope so. good, hopefully, hopefully. But I think it's good to to look at a, a gymnastic skill from this point of view, because if you don't understand this this, if you don't understand what shapes you should be doing, how you should get into those skills, you're just going to keep building bad habits, and you're going to process into you you'll get six weeks down the line and you'll be at exactly the same spot because you've not learned the skill. You've just been trying to do a backflip. Yeah. You just so, go and you carry on. Because we've got, because we've got this like bent legs and hip angle and stuff like that, it's going to take a lot more effort to 
push backwards and get over. So what happens is when we straighten our legs, our hips start to like sort of like come this way, and we end up with this here. Also, with that, you have to sort of you have to sort of keep like a close sho shoulder angle almost there, um, yeah. which is not what we want really. We want our arms sort of above our head, with, where like covering your ears. Yeah. Um, but because we've done this, we're creating a shoulder angle and the somersault or backflip, sorry, isn't really going anywhere. It's sort of just going like a straight an end, like a loop. Yeah. And that, is that when um, you up short? Would your back handspring end up short because of that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like what I said to you the other day on the message, um, your feet need to be snapped in to push you backward. You should, it's a very, very small amount of time. You should see something. I don't know if you can see, can you see my mouse? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you should end up with this sort of like freeze frame, really. And then from there, you swing your arms backwards to yeah. create that like arched handstand type thing. Round off, coming back in a dish shape, and then you're back with handspring, not round off. Oh my God, I need to do a backwards handspring as quick as I can. Yeah, and start throwing your head out, creating more angles and your shoulders and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you get back up uh, the videos that I've sent you, yeah. and, we, and we play Where that first handspring back, you see the hmm. angles. Look at that. So that 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 just there that you just had then was basically the picture you've just drawn. Yeah. So that's like the pike bit. All right. So that is the push off your hands. First bit. This bit that, that here, and then th this is sort of what we want to be doing, which there requires a lot of physical preparation. But yeah, it wants to be sort of like going to like a front support position almost, like a long support. I call it with your arms by your ears rather than down in front of you. Um, and go back to the video, not that thing. Yeah. There. See, head's dropping back and we've got like a... A self-portrait of you. I know he has. <laughs> <laughs> See, like I said, from there you have to like push from your legs a lot harder than you should need to, rather than using the floor to like use your own energy to push you back because in jump you're sort of having to use your legs a lot more. You, yes, you should use your legs, but not as much as yeah. that almost. And see how I said because your head's already out and you're just throwing your arms back, you're gonna get that little like N-shaped back handspring instead. So your hips come up, your arms. ID left, we would like them to be like straight here by now. You don't end up finding that handstand shape to get back up again, do you? Not quite, no, because it's sort of it's sort of like you're just falling on your hands almost. Like bouncing and Yeah. Oh. So here and that because of because it's that end shape and all of like your force is coming down, your shoulders will come forwards. Yeah, rather than be yeah, stuck in them Do you get what I mean? Rather than keeping them open and bouncing from handstand, you're sort of just hitting your handstand and doing this. So you can see it with your shoulders when you touch. They should stay open like this. I'm pointing my finger, but you can't see my hands. <laughs> they should stay open like this, and then your legs should sort of come this way. Yeah. Whereas they just drop it. You should see, look, this shoulders have come forwards, and your legs go straight down again. Yeah. That's right. That you was know what I mean? That was the first one of the day. So did we... Carry on the first one. video, we'll move on to the next one and then watch a couple. And then if we see one that's like, oh, you've got a focus point on that one, pause it at there. Yeah. And you, you can teach us. So that's what we're all about, isn't it, on this, this channel? Yeah. Learning, education. We'll put it to use tomorrow, won't we? Yes. So let's have a look at the second one. We want a little bit and put it in. Sorry, Mo. So cool that you can do that. <laughs> There we go. Look at those yeah, so the, ha ha the hand position isn't too bad, actually. That's quite a good hand position because you can push a lot through your fingers from that, that place there. A lot of people tend to have the hands just sideways, so that's good. What do you mean sideways? So like, people just, when they're doing a round off, just put the hands like the thumbs touching where you should have like middle finger touching so then you can press off the floor. And Yeah, upside down too. Yeah. 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 Um, so not quite as piked, but We'll fast forward it a little bit and see. <laughs> see how it ends up. <laughs> um, okay, see that? See how it's sort of like I'm worse going towards this way instead of that way. Yeah, your force is sort of just pushing those knees forward, so then you're having to sort of 
throw your hips up, throw your head back to even go backwards at all. Um, it's almost making it into two different skills, isn't it? As opposed to a round off, yeah. it makes it into a round off, stop, back handspring. If, you, if you're going to do a round off ready for back handspring, like, you shouldn't be able to stop on your round off. You should, it should just push you back straight away almost. You should have that force pushing you back. I always I say to you, don't I, I go, I don't want you to have the choice whether to do a back handspring or not. You either do a back handspring or you fall on your ball. Yeah, like doing, doing a round off, for, ready for a round off back handspring is a completely different round off to just doing a round off to stop. Like, you can't do the same round off as you would do to stop and then get a back handspring out of it. Yeah. You yeah. probably might get it over, but it won't be like technically correct it's almost yeah let's keep playing it through so the shoulders are quite they were a lot stronger in that handstand to be fair they didn't close as much which made you get up a lot easier you can see go on to the next one there is i think there is one in here that makes me go oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> one out of 15 <laughs> no you do really good ones uh, no they're just not very often that one was not okay. good. It wasn't too bad. It's easy to slow something down into slow motion and like pick it apart because yeah, you can see every minor detail. Like when you watch that in fast motion, it looks like you're you're not good. Not first. not saying it's bad, but you're not going to play the first one and then the four four round off back handsprings later, you're going to go okay, I've, I've clicked it, I've got it, I know how to do it. You, you're going to yeah, takes ages. How long do you say it takes you to teach your, your development girls to do a round off back handspring from day one to round off back handspring? Oh, from day one. So if they're starting at like four, they, they, they won't really do it until they're six or seven because we don't like to rush the skill. We like they to be like physically and like technically prepared before we do it. That's um, right. From that day one of being in the gym, is they're conditioning their body and getting ready for this. Yeah, skill. yeah. It's wrong. Like, Physically preparing your body makes a skill ten times easier. Um, a lot of people yeah. don't really like conditioning or trying hard in conditioning. They're the ones that will struggle doing the skills like later on. Yeah, well, that is the, the basis of gymnastics, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, let me put it in slow mo. Conditioning is important. There. That's your face. Still got a bit of a hip angle on that one, but like where I've paused it here, the hip, the knees aren't. As far as bent and as forward, you sort of, you, you have snapped up a lot better. So, if this, if you could just lean your back the other way, so using this position, sort of laying backwards rather than leaning forwards, that would be more ideal. Um, so again, knees pressing forward a little bit. It's a lot longer. You, you've def it's definitely better because you because you, you started like the back handspring standing up more. It's got more power going backwards. So shoulders were good on that one. You didn't really close them that much. So you sort of relaxed a little bit, but they didn't do that. Do you know what I mean? I think that's why I did um, it. part three, where I, I I used that like what you said, like how it's longer. Because I used that. Yeah. I was saying push push further back with your round off back handspring, and then you told me with the feet as well oh, to, to to snap through on your round off. So then we tried to put them both together, and you you will you'll see as we go through the video that from the first one to about three minutes in this video, that they're, they're massively different. Yeah, definitely, yeah. That little uh, let's have a look at this one. Because I've seen this one specifically went pretty high. Mm. So this is quite a, a common thing. See, the, sh the shoulders never come in line with the, like, your ears. There they should be driving back. They, yeah. Rather than, you, rather than, like, your back pushing you backwards, it should be, by there, it should be your arms snapping you back. Yeah. So that your, your arm should be leading, not your head. So, and that's why it comes so high. If I just put it back into the start of it. You, you're, you're getting more and more upright, definitely, which is good. From the first one. What's that? Yeah, from the first one. It's just pushing yeah. back, isn't it, is the problem. But because you were standing up right there and your head was leading, that's why it sort of looped over the top almost. Uh, like it, do you know what I mean? It sort of, you didn't really feel like you had a lot of contact with your hands. Yeah, yeah, no, it didn't. Quite a lot of them felt like I could have done it without me. Because you're, so, you're sort of going up and then when your hands touch, your feet touch at the same time, whereas it should be sort of like a... Push up your hands. A long, a long M rather than sort of like just a little M, if you get what I mean with that. 
Is that the next one? Do that arrow on it. Is that just there? Which arrow? Oh, yeah. Is that my, is that my mouse? Oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was supposed to be from one of the drawings. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of it. That's a good point. Oh, if you can draw on that video, then. Oh. <laughs> I think you can, actually. Okay. It, it, doesn't look too, it doesn't look too bad, actually. It's so mad, like, breaking it down and slowing it down, where, like, especially like, when I'm editing it and stuff, is breaking it down like that, you end up literally, every, every bit of fine detail, you're sitting there going, this needs to be better, that needs to be better, that needs to be better. Yeah. When you play it in full, you go, yes, sir, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that, that, that's what makes the difference, being able to spot that, like, minor thing every time, because, yeah. obviously, in a gymnastics session, you're not just going to sit there around a computer screen for an yeah. hour or so, looking at five or six different things. Um, I think that probably helps me a lot, though, is recording myself and then looking back at it. Yeah, it gives yeah, me definitely, yeah. In my head of, oh, that's what it looks like. Let's do this, do that. Yeah, because you can sort of like, you might think your body's in one position when it's actually not. When you look at it from an outside point of view, your body sort of like deceives you sometimes. So, for so this thing, what's that? It's like me spinning around the high bar doing uh, giants, and I can feel like I'm saying to you, my legs are straight, but they're not. When yeah. <laughs> you want to see my high bar? Right. It's just there. <laughs> <laughs> so going on to the back tuck side of it, once you obviously you round off and fix quite good, and you start getting a bit of power in that jump, the snap wants to be completely different from the round off. So with a round off snap, you're sort of looking for this, like, almost leaning back like you're in a dish like a short dish position but standing up you sort of want to be let me get my pen out so move on to a different screen it's drawing for hundred thousand <laughs> <laughs> so let's say we've got our feet we almost pretty much want to be upright standing upright I think that's what's hard to get your head around is that one of them you need to lean back and go back and then the second one you need to be able to go up and then tuck. Yeah, yeah, because it, it happens so fast it's quite hard to differentiate too because jokers are quite similar movements but they both end up in different things. So Yeah, because doing a round off into a back tuck is completely different to doing it into... Mm, yeah, definitely. So our arm position, we sort of want it like... You're trying to get that Yeah. Yeah. So from there, what we do is we sort of like lift up. So let me get an arrow. You want your arms to come up this way, but you don't want to you don't want to push them like so high up and so fast that your back starts to like press forwards. So you want to sort of lift them and stop, like you said, that like block. So they should come up to. Kind of rotates around your belly button as well. I thought I'd say. Are you trying to? Um, the aim is to rotate around your shoulders. Yeah. Oh. So imagine you've got a block behind you when you're doing it. Yeah. You can't be pressing your hips forwards, otherwise your shoulders will drop and you'll touch the block. Do you understand what I mean? So when you do round round off, um, second. <laughs> uh, when you do <laughs> when you do um, once you've done the back handspring, you sort of want to stand up, pretend there's a block behind you on a wall, and you're doing it over yeah. the wall. So you're going onto your shoulders on top of here. So your arms go up to here, they stop, and that's when your hips Bend. and knees start to press up yeah. like that. And then you've got that rotation for, like going. Um, it's, sort of, it's sort of like you're here and your rotation goes like that rather than your hips pressing forwards and you're going backwards. Right, so that's how you create it. As soon as you put your hips forward, your shoulders are going to drop, aren't they? So you, you, yeah, you, definitely. Yeah. As soon as your shoulders drop, you lose all your height. And more than likely, if your hips are pressing forward, your knees are going to bend as well. So that's you're not yeah. going to get height there either. So I tell so you, you, sort of got it. I say catch a football behind your head. So imagine like you're in goal and you've just been locked, and you jump like that and you try and catch that football just yeah. behind your head, but also bring your hips and knees together with it. Yeah. So the one thing I say, like, a lot of the time is tighten your lower back, which is sort of strange because if you sit there and try and squeeze your lower back muscles, it's pretty difficult. But 
when you do it, it's sort of like when your feet hit the floor and your arms raise to this point, you sort of got to like squeeze your core like stiff, like a stick almost. Yeah. So your back doesn't relax. So is that look at the videos. Mm. What's that? So there's a lot more into it than just a back flip. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, a lot of people don't understand that, which is nice to do a video like this, is that somebody could look at this, say a 12-year-old kid that's in a back garden because she can't get a gym, she watches this, but she can do the basics and she can, she can do some skills in the garden. It's just good to... Yeah, and that's when you see people that have like, taught themselves how to do round off flips and stuff like that, and they're like, why can't I do uh, a tuck back after it? It's because... Nine times out of ten, they're going into the round off wrong, which leads to the finishing position to be wrong and the handsprings are wrong. And then it's sort of by then they've got no power and no energy like to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, so, what I said about when you're pressing your hips up and your shoulders back, your knees start to bend. That's what we've sort of got here. Yeah. So, if you, if you notice it, like your shoulders sort of don't rise at all, it should be like you're doing a straight jump onto a curb if you get what i mean so a lot of the times one of the preps that i do with the kids is i get them to do like a round off flick and when they're in this standing upright position i get them to swing their arms up squeeze the stomach and get them that's not really the pen is it stretch jump get like a overall. yeah get like a small block or some crash mats lined up behind them so then they have to finish in this position. Yeah. Yeah, so they have to finish in that standing right position. And then, then from there, they have to just do a complete stretch jump up and land on top of the block. So that gets them to do that sort of like that little freeze frame in between where they've done the round of flip, they snap and then jump up like that. It's not set, is it? It's yeah. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's the set. Yeah. I think that, yeah, that plays the massive part in it as well. Is it's, not, it's, not, it's a scary skill when you're first doing it. Even, like for yeah, me, definitely. I can do round off back handspring back to hook, I can round off back handspring and twist, but there's, there's, there's such a different element of fear when you go round off back handspring into something than it is round off, just because you've got, like, just even in so that picture, if it's just a round off tuck, you only need two of the pictures that are on the screen. Where when it's a round off back handspring, you've got step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, mm -hmm. and one needs to be one needs to be competent. For, the rest for nine to be good yeah and it's like we've sat and spoke about this for not however long now like 15 minutes or whatever and yeah. we've only done we've only explained round of flip took back really and yeah. you're expected to put all that into a skill that takes you three seconds to do it so it's That's sort of a lot of work your brain gets a bit of an overload sometimes yeah yeah it's not it'd be great if you could slow down in your head whilst you're doing it in yeah, yeah. If you could slow down time, it'd be easy to be able to do it perfect. That's what makes it so difficult because it's so fast and so powerful. I think that's what it shows, though, isn't it? Every time you do one, I'd say something, say something to Hannah different. Like, mm. Though I've said, focus on your arms on the last one. I'll then say, focus on pushing back or jumping tall on this one. But I'd still want to think about the other ones. But then you end up going to me. I can't think of so much. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. We've yeah work out what I need to think of to get it to we've worked out that yeah think about snap feet down fling hands back yeah have helped mm. yeah um so you use like visual cues to make it a lot easier for yourself so if we say like at the end of the if at the end of your round off you want to be looking I'll pause it when it gets there so at the end of your round off where like, let's say if your feet are here now, you want to be looking about here, if you can see my mouse still. Yes, forward. Yeah, so you want to, you want to be looking there. And then Once you jump and your arms swing, then, then your eyes follow your fingers. Yeah. When you're in a handstand, you want, to be, you want to be able to see your fingers, but you don't want your like, chin to be in front of your shoulders. You want it to be yes, like, new, neutral position almost. You don't want it to be there because you get disorientated and a bit lost. It makes your shoulders weak. You sort of want your ears covered and you want yourself to be like a bit of like a... I call it neutral head position, just still basically. And then after you flick, you want to be looking straight forwards. So you can even put like, I don't know, a piece of paper or like a little bullseye type target type thing in front of you on the wall if you've got room or whatever. Yeah. And once you finish round of flick, you want to spot that before you, before you do your tuck. So you do your straight jump, you're looking at that and then you're tucking. We've done a few, that a few times in the gym, haven't it? Where yeah. Thought, so can you stand there and then as they go round off, 
and then they go for their skill. We have our hands up like that, and we'll go put like ten fingers up or two fingers up, and then when they're finished, yeah. they how many fingers did I have up? And they'll go. It's too much to think if about. They, if they if they know how many fingers that you put up, then yeah, they did it right. Yeah. If at the end of yeah. it, I have no idea. Then they've either threw their head back or just closed their eyes. Yeah. I, yeah. All about a lucky guess and got it right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you go up more, then it'd be easier to rotate far enough to land on your feet. Yeah. That's the thing, is not being able to land on feet at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go forwards. Oh, I've got all my arrows all over the screen. <laughs> if you open the whiteboard up and clear it, will they disappear? Uh... Oh, yeah, you couldn't even see the ones at the top. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, there's a clear function there. I didn't see that. I feel like that one was pretty similar to the last one, to be fair, from what I saw. Every now and then she'll do a wicked one. Like, mm. she'll do one that's like, it's like I've never taught you. And then she'll stand at the end of the air track, have, have a word with herself, run down the air track, do round off, and I'm like, <laughs> that was it. You need that 100% every time. It's a waste of energy. But that's what makes it so difficult. Like you're, you're being told to do one thing to focus on your arms, and if you if your legs are not right, you're sort of building a habit to doing that wrong. Joe, if you say, "Oh, just focus on your arms," yeah, your legs will be lacking, and then you've got a habit to do that. It's so sort of, you have to sort of focus on everything at the same time, which makes it so hard. Okay, so the snap on that one wasn't too bad. Obviously, like. Still in that same position. It was like a feet to be more forwards, yeah, but we're, we're, we're a lot more upright than before, which is good. But that's where most of our power is going through there. And obviously, because there's nothing in there, it's got nothing to rebound through. If our feet are there, it will push back through our feet. Yeah. I've really tried to Shoulders do that quite... in the next episode. Uh, Don't try, really try to do that with her in the next episode. Like I showed you the clip, yeah. the next one of doing it onto the mat and pushing back. Yeah, that's, def that's definitely going to help. Definitely going to help. The sh your shoulders are quite strong in like the handstand though, which is good. Normally, when when you've gone quite high, when you get hit the handstand, like I've said before, your shoulders drop forwards because you're keeping them like locked and open. It's making it a lot easier for you to stand up. Yes. But we're sort of look at that. Yeah, how? Sorry, <laughs> that's, no, that's if you're doing if you're doing round off flick into a forward roll, maybe that would be perfect <laughs> position. <laughs> I can see why we don't get much height. Yeah, because all your power is sort of used up before your feet have even left the floor. You've got to straighten your body up. By the time you've straightened your legs up... Do I even get straight? No, I don't even get straight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if, if you watch where your shoulders are in, in line with it... Let's go... Sorry. At least we know there's a lot of stuff to improve. So, so like if we go... Yeah. <laughs> so if you go to your shoulders here, this is where you sort of like... You've almost... Your upright position there. When you're doing your somersault, they don't really go above that level if you watch them. Yeah, yeah no. Because really, really. I, I mean, so yeah. it's it's almost like you've got to imagine you've got a. I might even be able to. So let's say you've got your let's say you've got your person here like this, and we're looking at him, sort of straight on, if you get me. Yeah. Head not attached to the body, but you get what I mean. That's his head, that's his feet. He's really um, big. <laughs> what's that? There's a really big block in the little head. Yeah. <laughs> so you sort of want, imagine you've got like a stick through your shoulders. Yeah. Your, your stick at the minute is sort of through your lower back and hips. Do you get what I mean? So you're rotating around. Oh, that's not a straight line, is it? You're sort of rotating around this. Well, you should be rotating around this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to jump up more. I said, I said quiet feet to her the other day. I think that's quite good. Cause yeah. Because you kind of then... Because it, like... You understand that if, you, if you're quiet on your feet and you're bouncing off of your feet as opposed to... You're going to get... Yeah, the more you hit the floor, like, flat, the more energy is going to the floor that you're not really going to be using that much, so... 
but that sure. actually come with the tips that like that you've said like bringing your feet through so you're bouncing in the right way and yeah pushing in the so what, one of the like main muscles that people forget about is your calves everyone think it's sort of like your, your quads and like your shoulders and stuff in it when you when your feet hit the floor and you're jumping obviously we need to point our toes in gymnastics anyway but if you sort of point your toes like down towards the floor you sort of like pressing like that it engages all your calf muscles and you get a bit more power in that as well let's go on to the next one next one next one so these are the same day yeah they were weren't they? i'd skip a bit further along cam so if you go to like so you start at three minutes three minutes yeah about there there's me and my lovely suit was that a good one did i miss a good one yeah, if I'm reacting like that, it must be a good one. Like <laughs> okay, let's have a look at that one. That looked like you sort of like, you look very frustrated with that one, Josh. Because <laughs> it's got the potential there. Yeah. It just needs that 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 fine tuning. Once Hannah's clicked with it, once you've clicked with... I think we've clicked more with, I was really scared of back tucks though. Yeah. I didn't like going up and back, which is why I just used to try and go back from wherever I was rather than jump in. Yeah. So I left her alone for five minutes in the garden. I said, you're just doing Randall Tuck on your own. <laughs> and it went really well. So five minutes. We've, got a, we've got a massive difference from the round off. They're sort of getting more and more to this side of your body. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So if we've got a line from our shoulders, we, we want our feet on this side of it. They're getting there. They're getting more and more. That's why you're getting more and more power because more of it's being directed backwards rather than right through angle. the floor. Yeah. The arms are in a better position that time as well. Just Still not jumping no up. Yeah. So one thing to help that get you into that position. I keep going back to these drawings. They're dreadful, but it's really good though. It's a good visual. Good to be. <laughs> So when we do the back handspring, one of the progressions that we start off with is you do you like you round off. That's supposed to be a hand. Like that. So that is so a normal front support would be your hands on the floor like that, yeah. where. I call it a long support. I don't know if there's actually a name for it, but it's, a, it's basically like a long front support. We do this like, even even though when they can do run off, flip, tuck back, straight back, or anything, we go back to this every so often yeah. because that shoulder angle after it, when you reach your handstand from like your round off, when you round off flick, when you get to your handstand, you should be, ooh, which way are your hands? In that arched handstand position, yeah, is that the right way around? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you get what I mean? So yeah. that's the bottom of the feet. So you should be in that arched handstand position. No, that's the wrong way around. Hands just the wrong way around, isn't it? The rest is the right way. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's say they're like that. So like this, we've got our arched handstand position. Yeah. And then from there, like I said about shoulder angle. You've got to keep these open like that, and then your feet snap this way to create this long support position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then when you're going for a round of flick tuck, you're basically doing that, but you're snapping a little bit higher, a little bit faster. So you can do this position almost, but standing upright. Like, like you know, you know, changes in depending on whatever skill you're doing. As I can remember learning double twists on the track and one and a half twist. And the difference in your yeah, round yeah, definitely, yeah. one and a half twist to a double twist. Is a lot. Yeah, that, that's when when it starts to get pretty advanced like that. It's it sort of you don't go against what you said before, but if you want to go higher for your block, you need to be sort of leaning forwards. Yeah, it's almost. just it's like an example, isn't it? It's like even though that's yeah. the scale of how much it changes from doing round off back handspring back tuck to round off tuck to yeah, you you have to change what you do, and you can't expect to do the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do a different skill at the end of it without changing it. Right, like your you round off on its own can't be the same for a round off flick, which also can't be the same for tuck back, straight back, blah blah blah, blah like so on. 
that yeah so if you if you sort of aim for that long support position that I said and then keep going through that long support position until it starts to get more standing upright yeah that's when you'll have no angles in your body almost and then you, your height will like increase massively you definitely notice the difference in that yeah another skip here i say well, if we look at two more if we find two more well, there is one really good one in here where i don't even think i've touched her let's have a look at that one you land quite well on that one that was Yes, that, that had an element of what we're looking for in. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look at it from here. Yeah, see, look, we are getting there, so there. What? With the standing up thing. Yeah. I think it's because you always used to say keep your round off long, but you need the start of the round off to be long. Hmm. Like you need to reach into the round off, but then snap your feet in. Because I always thought long would be to land with my feet furthest away from my hands like that. Yeah. 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 So it's not a so, reach into it, but then cut it short to go back. Yeah. It's sort of like replacing your hands with your feet almost. You're pushing that hard that your feet are coming through you. Yeah. To push back. Just like you do your back hands. Um, you know, when you go shorter in your back hands. <laughs> so. See, it's, it's what you're doing is replacing your, rather than your feet being there, you're replacing it by putting your knees there almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? I suppose you've got Rather to, than to do that though as well. Because in my head I just think I'd What's that? Yeah. I said you got I suppose you'll have to build the strength to be able to do that as well. Like if she can't if she's not got the strength to push off her hands in the round off to bring her feet forward, doesn't matter how much yeah. you not gonna happen. Yeah, it all goes back to that physical preparation I was yeah. spoke about earlier. Um one thing you can do to get that round off more um like powerful is let's say we just put a crash mat here and do round off to stand up straight on the crash mat, round off to stand up straight, like falling back on the crash mat. Yeah. And if we move it, you've got that extra 30 centimetres worth of height for your feet to go through. And it will sort of like naturally go into that. Yeah. So you're, you're standing up a little bit better on that one and your shoulders do rise, so it does go a lot higher. But you're sort of, from there, you're sort of doing that. You know what I mean? You're sort of dropping your head back. Rather than from there, like going around the side. Uh, going around the side easier. If you keep your... If you keep like your stomach tight and your your lower back tight, if you sort of just do like a semicircle of your arms around to your legs and then pull, yeah, that's... It, it it will stop you from doing that because you won't just do this because you won't go anywhere. Here's a good if question: If you keep your lower back tight, up and round, make it a lot easier. In, yes. in the first episode, I I'm moaning at Hannah for tucking underneath her legs. What's your thoughts on that? Because um, I've seen people with wax tucking under their legs, and I don't think it looks as nice. No, um, it's just so hard to. But, and, and I don't feel like you get as much speed when you pull your legs underneath rather than on, on the front. I feel you so pull there's like this way, aren't you? From What's that? I feel like you pull from the wrong way underneath. Like when I'm grabbing at the front of my knees and I pull, I like I feel like I. I get smaller and I rotate faster because the smaller you Yeah, are. you sort of create, you're creating that like tension backwards. Whereas when you're underneath, you're sort of just closing your hip angle and. Like you're pulling yeah. your bum you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But then if I'm going to do a round off pike, I like going around and grabbing the back. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you sort of have to as a height, don't you? You can't yeah. really grab in front. But people say, oh, you can get your fingers trapped underneath your legs or something. But unless your legs get completely stuck in that position, I don't think you're really going to get trapped. Yeah. It's up to you. It's just personal preference, isn't it? But I, I think grabbing the front of your shins is, is looks nice, and I think it's better. I think it creates more power. But some people create more power underneath, so yeah. it's entirely up to you. That's what we tried to correct it, like throughout doing it. But you, you, you just can't get your head. It would take a lot to correct it. Yes. But all I'm saying is, the only place I've ever done a back to up is at New College. So must be Kurt's fault. <laughs> Okay, if you're watching this, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. I feel like if your hands are underneath your legs, you can sort of get like the wrong mid-body like position. Yeah, I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah. You so, still open. You let your bum sink down, doesn't it? Yeah, it's sort of like it pushes your lower back out almost, and you're sort of in like a 
right angle, right angle, which technically isn't wrong, but it, you'll rotate a lot faster if you're in more of a dish and your legs are in a bit tighter. And see here, you're sort of pulling your legs that way rather than pulling your legs oh, that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. I pull them into myself more. Mm. The smaller you are, the faster you rotate. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely, the improvement you've made from the first first video compared to this video is a massive difference. You'll definitely get it soon. I think it's harder teaching adults as well. Why? Yeah, because it's sort of. It's like what Cam says: is he's teaching his girls from when they come in the gym from four, yeah, and they're from. They'll it probably... becomes a habit, like they're learning as they grow up, rather than having your own brain that sort of tries to work its own way, like. A kid that will sort of only learn that way if, if they've learned it from when they're four rather than from their twenty or so. So a kid that comes to you when they're four years old, by the time they're ten, they've they've learned gymnastics the, the way that they should have, as opposed to, to I suppose you don't like your girls going home at home at the minute, do you? Training their skills in the back garden because they'll just keep doing it over and over again. And if they've not got camera and more, you, you you work with Anton who bet me ten pounds mm. the videos there. <laughs> <laughs> then they, 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 they haven't had that room to call to form the bad habits yeah yeah definitely yeah there's, there's no there's sort of like they're building the muscle pathways as it should rather than yeah i'm not saying you would have done other things that would have a muscle pathway like this but it's sort of like you sort of have your own sort of your brain sort of starts to think for itself when you're older obviously rather than just enlisting and building it when you're a kid aren't you you're like yeah right yeah, it's like a foundation to build rather than sort of just trying to build it completely. Machine, a gymnastics machine. From They go to the shop when they're four and they come out at 18 and they can do all the crazy stuff that they do. <laughs> that one was so this isn't as bad. This, this, yeah, this is, this is a lot better. Um, your shoulders aren't dropped back as much. Your head's quite neutral, really. Until. This position, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really open. You, you, it's so slow like this. If this position here should be the position that I was talking about with your arms in front and you doing that straight jump almost. So you sort of, it's almost like you're trying to rush it over by throwing your head back, which actually slows you down a lot. <laughs> What's that? I didn't know that. Say again. It's because I was just scared of going high, but with practice doing just back tucks, so that I, obviously easier when you go high, but when you're scared of going high and then back, that's when you just end up just going, I just need to get over. Yeah, definitely. That, that's like, like you said about the kids and stuff like that, they sort of don't really have that fear because they don't really know the consequences of it almost. So they do it as it should rather than, like you just said, you know that you're scared of going backwards and going high. Yeah. They learn that that's okay. So it's sort of, that, it's not like you know, career, isn't it? Like when we were, 14, 15, and someone went do a double front or do a double back. Yeah, sound off straight into the pit. But yeah. Now, I'm 23. You're 21? 21. 21. Now someone says to us, do this skill, do that skill, and something in the back of our mind goes, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got to get up for work the next morning. I don't yeah, think I can do that right now. <laughs> I've got no money, so I kind of have to not do <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Right, come on then. Let's watch this one and then watch. You, watch you get it wrong quite well on that one, to be fair though. This was the most frustrating day because I just wanted to land on my feet and we just didn't, did we? You did one on your own. Yeah. But we didn't value it. We didn't value <laughs> it. That, that one, that's definitely probably the best one I've seen so far. That's quite a good one. I think it's quite cool to be able to see how it progresses and how it develops. Yeah, even just in one session is. So if, if we look at that compared to the, the first one, yeah, it's definitely a lot better. We're still getting this, obviously, which isn't helping, but you sort of, you, you're getting a lot more power. So not that it doesn't matter, but yeah, it, you'll improve if you do it, obviously. Yeah. So you're snapping up, slight hit that hip angle again, rather than that front support position, yeah. you're sort of doing that, which is obviously, that we spoke about earlier. Definitely a lot higher. It looked like a better take on that one. Let me see that. Yeah, you're you're standing upright a lot more, definitely. And it does shoot up. That yeah, it has a little that, bit. This is, what's that? It has a little bit of up, but then the head's just... Yeah. 
Yeah, because of like your head's dropping and your lower back sort of pushing forwards, it's limiting that height. And that rather than keeping your head cheap, putting your head too far in or putting like socks on your head, I feel like that can like disorientate you quite a lot. Obviously, yeah. it's good, good when the little kids could go learn it like that, but. Just look at, looking forwards and keeping it forwards, like trying to look at the wall in front of you as long as possible. I'd say for you, it's probably better than putting like a sponge under there or something. But the height is definitely a lot different. I think that's so. good for adults as well, is that if you're teaching somebody that can think for themselves more, when you tell them stuff like that, instead of putting a sock in between your chin, you don't have to do that because I can say to you, I need you to do this. Yeah. And a, a, a six year old kid would go, yeah, but they won't understand it. Whereas, no, no. Older person would go, yeah, okay, yeah, I, get, I actually get what you're saying. Well, I'm not that old. <laughs> older. This is the best bit of the video. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you if you tell a kid to look at the wall in front of them, there's the let's say if the wall's I don't know, twenty meters high, so they could be looking at the bottom of the wall or the top of the wall. They don't know the difference, and the difference is that much with the head. But if you say look straight in front of you, they'll look straight rather than there. Do you know what I mean? Your spatial awareness is a little bit better when you're older, obviously. There it is. There we go. Right, I need one more thing from you, Mr. Cameron. Yes. No, thank you for that. If you could, uh, to be fair, that picture is... Put it to use tomorrow. Oh, no, get that picture back up. Which one? Share your screen again. This one? Oh, I don't oh. really know how to use this very well. <laughs> we'll leave it there. This one. This one, this one. No, get the oh. video of this back up. This is really important. Is it the thumbnail? Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you pop this little bit out. No, we'll see if your tricks work tomorrow. If they should do. Hmm. Tomorrow might be the day. <laughs> Yo. Just... Uh, I don't think that's the right video either. Don't worry about it. Leave that one up. Computer's froze. Just give me a thumbs up. There's the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much, Cameron Pallet, for joining no us on this educational of gymnastics video. I don't know what I'm going to title it yet. Education of gymnastics. Do you think it's helped? Yeah, no, it has. Visualize. Yeah. Just to understand the skill and know where you need to go and where you need to get better, what goes wrong, what it's goes nice wrong. It's nice to hear it from somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I hope it doesn't sound like a load of waffle. It's hard to make sense when it's oh, yeah, yeah. staring at a screen rather than pushing people into positions. But yeah, you, if you could sum it up, if you can conclude it into three three top tips from Cameron Pallet, what three top tips would we uh, would we send over to Hannah? Um, <sighs> put you on the spot there. That's two, two. That's it. Two. One or two. <laughs> Don't do. <laughs> no, um, this. Think, think about angles, like I said, obviously, if, if you've got hip angle and knee angle. So think about your angles as one. Yeah. Um, little kids can't really do that as much because they don't really understand it, but obviously. Yeah. Um, think about your angles. Um, use visual cues to help your head position. Yeah. And number three, I don't know, stick at it, keep going. Your muscles will get stronger and it'll become easier. <laughs> the more you do it, the stronger you'll get. You'll build a muscle pathway and everything. There we go. And that's, the, that's yeah. the end of our educational video. Thank you for you guys that are watching this. If you've watched it all the way through, hopefully you've learned something from the experience and qualifications that Cameron Pallet's got. He goes into detail of loads of gymnastic skills. Head over to his Instagram, give him a follow, at Cameron Pallet. I'll put the link down in the description. If you did learn something from this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you've not already, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.